Nick, awesome to have you here tonight. I'm going to give a quick introduction to you, which is that you're an AI-powered content creation specialist, awesome, social media strategist, and sales expert, and those all go together. But not only that, you're also an author of self-help books for men, and we maybe will touch on that if we've got a little bit of time at the end. But Nico, great to have you with us today. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Now, we're going to get straight into straight into the nuts and bolts. And you are and you do a lot of AI powered content creation. But where you're different to quite a lot of other folks out there in the market is that you understand human psychology, human behavior, and you use NLP, which you can explain that concept now to create better communications and messaging with clients. So can you maybe talk to us about what is NLP and how has this helped your communication style with generating content for clients and yourself? If anybody out there has ever heard of Tony, Tony Robbins, which he is world known, he that's what he does. NLP is if you've ever seen anything made by Tony, Tony Robbins, bleh, Tony Robbins, that's NLP for you. It, it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Basically, it's the understanding of how your brain works so it's highly highly used in marketing it's highly used in sales it's the easiest way i could put it there are techniques out there to create rapport with your audience your customer your client and over uh, i used to be a sales engineer in a one of the biggest telecommunication companies in north america and over the the 12 years that i was in that field i studied books upon books upon books if you look behind me my, that's barely a tiny portion because i've been traveling in uh, the us in an rv for 13 months now i have another 20 sitting right next to me but the point is that psychology and nlp help you create rapport with customers how do you create a relationship because at the end of the day when you're selling the product doesn't matter as much as the person that's selling it it is all about how to create relationships with customers so that you can establish trust. I've done a few certifications in NLP and I got to tell you that it can be evil. Don't get me wrong. There is, it is extremely powerful, powerful stuff. You're capable of really playing with people's mind because if you understand that people want, people like you because they see you, they see themselves in you. This is unfortunately or fortunately how all human interactions are made. You either love someone because you see yourself or you don't like this person. And normally that's because you see bad traits of you in that person. So you don't like them. It's, it's very interesting, but yeah, there's, you know, you said it well, AI is great. AI is beautiful. AI can streamline, optimize all your work, your workflow, especially as a content creator. But there's always a lack of human touch. There's always, there's an understanding. You're still talking to human beings. So as powerful as it can help you, it's, n it's nowhere close to being that great yet. Well, I, th I think that's the challenge that marketers are going to face in the future yep. is AI is being seen as this panacea, this pill that people can take and it's going to reduce headcount, it's going to make them more efficient, it's going to get more marketing messages out. But at the same time, because everyone can get more marketing messages out and messages that are hitting the right sort of sweet spot, people are just going to start ignoring those ads now because they know, oh, that's another AI generated one, it's too perfect, it's too clean, it's too clear. This is where NLP and where understanding behavioral psychology come in. So let's, let's talk a little bit maybe about creating content that really catches people's attention. So this is where understanding consumer behavior comes in. And maybe talk to me about how important it is understanding your customer and maybe different customer segments or personas and creating content for them. And then maybe how AI helps generate the trickle down effect. Well, AI to me is where your, your beginning process starts. So once you have, if you want, everybody knows what a niche is. If you want to go down into a niche, I can literally jump on chat GTP right now, chat GPT, sorry, and just say, this is my niche, describe them to me. 
describe what their pains are, describe what keeps them up at night, describes them, describe everything I need to know about the people that fall into that niche. So it helps you understand what your niche is. Then you can start looking at what the hashtags, what are titles that actually capture their, uh, that's going to capture their attention, but especially the attention of the algorithm because they're classif classifying people into hashtags, titles, and description. That's what the, that's what the algorithm does. Now, where there's always a need for human touch, let's say if you understand that right now, the attention span, as per studies, attention span of a human being is between six to eight seconds. We've, we've lost about 20 to 25% attention span in the past 20 years. This is why if you look at reels, they are king right now and they will continue to be so for a very long time. Reels are the king and this is something I shouldn't say on a podcast, but long form content is dying because people don't have the attention span for it. There, if you want to capture the attention of people, you have, as per study, six to eight seconds. I can tell you as a content creator that does this day in, day out, and helps clients to do so, it's more around four seconds. So you need to understand what a hook is. And this is a component of psychology and NLP is to, you have four seconds to grab somebody's attention. So you need to be able to say something that will create a reaction or at least capture their attention. So right now, AI can show you an idea. You could say, write me, I can literally go on chat GPT right now, right? I want to I, write me a video on, write me a video script on this, whatever the subject is, click enter, and it's going to write you something. You have a base, but then you have to go through that base and make it yours. Yes, you have somewhat of an idea and a structure, but you need to adapt that, stru that structure to you because they don't give you a good hook. Like this is why I'm saying AI is great, but it's the starting point to everything that you do. So it's that's why understanding how to capture people's attention is you have to. And you look at video editors like Opus, you look at Get Munched, you, get that, you look at Repurpose, they take long form content and they create short form content. I have not, as good as they say they are, they're not that great yet because they don't capture. Some of them capture, but I haven't seen one reel yet in thousands of them that I did not have to edit. I did not have to change the hook to make it more interesting to people. So this is why the human touch for now, at least for the next little while, is not going to go away. But does it, will it cause job to people? I would have to say yes, that eventually it will be, especially for copywriters. Because that's another thing. I've taken a few certifications in copywriting in order to understand the methodology. How do I take psychology NLP and put it into words that is appealing to people? Because again, my videos are never made. Most of the time, I always have a structure to my video. I don't look at a teleprompter and read off script, but I always have, I've taken the time to write almost a blog and then I can go through and just bang it out. But this is why all those skills combined are not there just with AI. There's still a base that people need to understand. And it goes even further than that. It's your, what, what people want to see when it comes to content, and it doesn't really matter if it's you're a content creator, if you run a business, if you're a coach, or if you have a product to sell, they want to believe in you. They want the authenticity. They want to feel something from you. And that's what NLP talks about all the time. People, they want to see what we call mirroring. You want, people want to see themselves in you. They want to feel understand by you, understood by you. This is why, again, it's all about the content creator, the person in front of that camera creating rapport, sounding authentic. So not only do you need to understand how to create captivating scripts, videos, a hook, having the right niche that you're talking to, you need to be able to take your natural skills and develop a style that is authentic to you. Because you won't listen to anybody that's not authentic. You know, and you know it right away. Watch a video from a guy you know is reading off script that it doesn't come natural. Next, next, you're just, you're swiping. You're just swiping, right? So this is why 
right now, if you're a smaller business, if you're a content creator that doesn't have a team of 20 behind you, understanding how to integrate AI will streamline and optimize your creating content, like the way your, your workflow, the way you create your content, the way you publish it, the way you put it out there. But there's a lot of natural skills that needs to be developed in order for people to pay attention to you. You use the word authenticity quite a few times. I think mm -hmm. you, you say authenticity, yes, be authentic. Man, it's so difficult to be authentic because I think a lot of people don't believe in themselves. I think, well, well, I've got a brand. Let me just put a logo in front. The logo will be able to shield me. The branding will be able to shield me. A nice blog post will be able to shield me. But in this era that we're in now, personal branding is becoming, is, is the new brand, basically. So I don't think we're necessarily going to see any more Coca-Colas and Fords and enormous, co we might have obviously those big standards that perhaps make it, but the majority are just going to be people that you want to interact with. And the brands that seem to have been successful, like, you know, Mr. Beast and the Kardashians and folks like that, it's they're being their authentic selves. And it's very difficult for people to be authentic. And AI and all of these processes, again, are just to amplify or reduce your workload or, or make you more efficient. But how 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 do you help your clients create that authenticity do they all manage it or do some just give up and think this this is not for me <laughs> that's a very good question because nowadays i won't work with somebody that i don't see something in them if if you're not coachable if i see that you can't take what i have to tell you and i'm going to hurt your feelings we're not going to work together i'm not here to make you feel better about yourself i'm really here to develop a personal brand with you something that is aligned with your talent your voice your natural skills so i i'm good enough now i've dealt with enough people i've coached enough people that i know who i can and cannot deal with anymore so, and i'm all about long-term relationships i don't like the oh we're going to work a couple of months and then we're done i don't take those type of customers either my goal is to work with you for years because just I got a customer of mine that we started from the get -go, from the beginning. Like he's never really been on podcasts. He hasn't done interviews. So we started from the get go from building that brand, building his voice. So for the, the first three, four months of him and I working together was just me giving him tricks on making better video. We edit all of his videos. We would, we, we, we put the brand together. We revamped what he had, but all we've been doing for four or five months is developing his presence, developing how great he is in front of the camera. And now I started booking him on podcasts because I know that he has the confidence in what he's, he's so good and he's a fitness expert. The guy is, I've been in fitness for more than 20 years. He is the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable guy I've ever met. But when we first started, I got to his gym with 20, 30 grand of equipment and was directing him. I'm like, okay, bro, when you're doing this, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. And he hated me, absolutely hated me. He screamed at me multiple times. I get it, I get it. It sucks to have somebody in front of you telling you, nope, wrong, wrong, stop, start again, start again, start again. But now his videos are absolutely amazing. Now I started putting him on podcasts because I wanna put his voice out there. I want him, now it's time to develop a style where people are questioning you develop a message that aligns with what you say that feels natural when you say it you say it enough and enough and enough and then it's just you know how to answer pretty much any question that comes out so it's it's a very long process to get from a to z it will take a long time and a lot of the stuff that i do is coaching is how do you get better at speaking to people and the numbers never lie. We can always go back to videos, look at the numbers, look at the amount of views, the comments, how many people interacted with that content, and there's no lying. Numbers don't lie. So you might, that's why I'm saying if you don't, if your ego is going to get hurt, don't work with me because I will tell you why. Because you might, you might say, oh, I love to do this type of content. Yeah, but unfortunately for you, it doesn't work. Your voice, your personality does not work well with this type of content. So let's try something else. And that's what it comes down to. It's always, once your brand is developed, figure out the message. 
give the skills to the person that's in front of the camera. Because once you have those skills, it doesn't matter what you're selling. You could start a new business in two years, give this one away to somebody else to run it because it runs well. You do a few videos every now and then because you're the face of the company. But once you're good in front of the camera, sell skills are probably the best skill a content creator can have. It's a craft and with any craft it takes hours and hours of uh, getting your knuckles cut and uh, you know saw back and and I think a lot of people think because social media and digital is so quick you can put a video out you can put social media posts out so quickly they think well the whole process should be quite quick I'll be able to be good at this quite quickly and you know, as a podcast host and a podcast host as, as yourself, I'm sure your pers- first podcast was awful. <laughs> and you know, maybe it was amazing because you're a, a natural at it. But the first one generally isn't wonderful. And you learn mistakes. You, you listen to yourself and you go, wow, why do I say I'm an ass so much? Thank heaven for Descript that can remove all these gaps and so on. But you learn your art. You learn how to speak people. You know, learn how to speak to people. You also see how do you engage with different kind, t- kinds of guests. You don't necessarily get training for that. There's no book on. Okay, this guy doesn't answer questions. He just says, "Great question. Thank you for asking." Uh, and you run out of questions, and the interview is really short. So how do you deal with that? So you're becoming a journalist and interviewer. The, all of these skills that you have to learn, and doing video content, like you said, standing in front of a camera for the first time, where the hell do you put your hands? <laughs> and and an they're all, great yeah. point. Great point, because this, a lot of people do this, and this is one of the worst thing you can do, because you're basically, you're showing people, you're locking yourself out of it. You're, this means I'm not open, I'm not really happy, I'm nervous, I don't like what I'm doing. So it's not gonna come up well. So it's a great point, like my hands are in front of me, but I'm like this, right? Yeah. Well, you, Those are gonna, all tricks. Those well, are you're all gonna tricks. love. You you're gonna love this. And I, I do a lot of techniques in my in my class. And one of them I did for the first time, which I've been dying to do, was interpretive dance. And I said to the the class, "Okay, get into teams, and you've got to do interpretive dance and explain a landing page or explain a customer journey." And it's amazing how people then start because they're not speaking public speaking. They're not stuck like this. They're moving around. They and you apply that then into your, your talking and your speaking. It's just loosening up the limbs and getting you used to using the whole space versus just that little block that you're stuck on. So I'm sure you've got fantastic coaching techniques and things like that, which maybe we can talk about on, a, on another call. But let's go back to digital marketing and social media. Your Alpha Creative Blueprint sounds quite interesting, and I'm going to share a link to this, uh, to, um, and I'm going to share a link so that people can follow along with us as well. And could you break down your five step methodology? Yes, sir. So you're looking at the first step. I like it to call like the brainstorm, but the structure of your content, you have your video editing and audio editing. So making your content better, you have your distribution and SEO really where, what type of content works where, what time, and how do I reach the masses? Then you're going to have your promotion and engagement. So you need to see what people are saying about your content. And this is probably, ego-wise, this is probably the hardest one. The number four promotion and engagement is probably where I work with customers the most because this one sucks. Because people online are hiding behind a, a, a phone and they will tell you exactly how they feel. And a lot of the time, it ain't fun. And it sucks because it's personal, right? People don't understand you might have done a six-minute video that you turned into a one-minute reel. But there was maybe three hours of work. Like, people don't understand how long it takes to put a very good reel out there. Sometimes it's one take, you got it, it's bang on. Sometimes it just does not want to come out. And then the last time is really to do the analysis and improving. I like to call it analysis and pivot. So... Your brainstorming is pretty simple, is really... The thing is, if you look at at a piece of AI like ChatGPT, for example, I have conversations with it all the time. I work, I wrote, so let's say I'm creating a video, whatever the video is about, let's say a video about AI. I'll, I have an idea, I wanna say how AI can improve 
or streamline your content. Awesome. I can ask that. Hey, can you please write me? And yes, I say please to the AI. I'm so po I'm Canadian. I'm very polite, <laughs> right? Can I, I say please and thank you to the AI all the time. I, so I do this. I do the same thing. I can't. I can't <laughs> not. I feel like I, I just can't do it. I don't want to break me being polite because I don't necessarily perceive it as a person. And then when I'm talking to somebody else, I'm not going to be as polite. So I, I'd rather be polite to everybody. But that, that's the beauty of. AI is that I can go in and say, write me a script on whatever, whatever the subject is, it doesn't matter. It will write it for you. Or I could say, give me 30 ideas as a content creator of what I could do about X. It will give you 30 for you. You can ask for a hundred subjects. And then you're capable of just taking it and saying, you know what? I don't like those 50. I'll, I'll bar them. You can do that in ChatGPT, for example, or you can go to vidIQ, which is another AI that you can have that specializes more on YouTube, and it will give you 50 ideas a day to tell you, hey, right now we, we're, we're, we're analyzing Google altogether, and those are the subjects dip on your niche. Those are the subjects that you should talk about. So I can literally take vidIQ, take their ideas every day, they rank it by the type of how how good they think it's going to become. I can take that title, shove it into chat GT, GPT and say, give me a one minute script for this idea. Then it's going to design it. Cool. So once you have that, you have a structure. But then you go through it and you say, okay, let's make it mine. So I don't like because it's never perfect. It's not going to spew you a text. Like it likes to use super long very intelligent words when when you're actually making a reel you want short snappy straight to the point right so this is where having being able to to speak to a to the ai like it's your friend really just to say hey i was thinking about doing a video you can literally take a piece of content and say hey what do you think about this enter it will tell you well this is good this sucks and if i was you i would change it to this so this yeah. is how I treat command line, if you will, AI is like this. It's really somebody that I can throw ideas. They throw something back. I throw, I throw it back at them. So yeah, this and is the first step of understanding. Yeah, and I suppose because AI is a learning, it's a large language model. It knows different styles of communication. So it knows if you're speaking very politely, you just want to get straight to the point. It'll it will give you the responses in that style. It's quite it's quite smart like that. So Shut GPT is uh, one of my. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a fan, uh, and I've got a little cat sitting next to me here as well, which is why that's which is why that's funny. Tell me who is this? Um, who are these techniques for? So the Alpha Creative Blueprint. Who is the target market for this? Who could who could get value out of this? Man, I, I really help male content creators because if one thing I know after having cre been creating content for almost four years now, it's very hard as a man to make, to receive a lot of views on your content. Because it, how are we, so? If, if you're not taking your shirt off and prostituting yourself, very hard. If you have a message that you want to be, that you want to put out there, very hard, extremely, extremely hard. So I'm not saying I don't work with women. That's not what I'm saying at all, because I do have clients that are amazing women. But when I wrote this, it's really in mind for male content creators that are trying to help men do better. Because everything that I do, like the, the five steps that I talk about are as applicable to male content creators as they are somebody that runs a business that has a service to sell, because they're all steps of brainstorming, editing, distributing, promotion, and then you have improvement. Look at the numbers and see what works, see what doesn't. So this is applicable to every type of content creators out there. But when I created it, I created it for guys like me, what I now, was four years ago. Now, it almost sounds like you're a bit apologetic or sorry, it's not for women. You don't see uh, female social media businesses that being apologetic for focusing at, at, fe at the female market. So I don't think you should ever be worrying about what people's perceptions are about that. And there are specific, 
needs that men have that are yep. different to you know the 100%. Uh, our, our female compatriots and so on so i think uh, it's very good that there is an offering that's out there that is tailored for for men who are looking at getting a specific at getting their messages across to other men and men are complicated as well so we need specific styles and they you know they're also di a whole bunch of different types of men so how do you reach them and how do you communicate with them so definitely a, a great area to look at ai is continually evolving so how are you staying on top of all this stuff you're talking about chat gpt just before this call we had a quick chat about this chat gpt chat gpt 3 3.5 4 4.5 turbo the bing copilot bard i mean where how how do, how do you process and manage this these changes in ai and you select have... and and select what is right for you testing 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 i'm always testing like i was just i keep a folder on my on my google chrome right now i have one two three four five six seven eight there's eight ai that i've used over the past month and their tests that's outside of get munched that's outside of repurpose that's outside of things like jasper that i've used forever so those are the thing that i tested but i test anywhere from faceless videos so really having a script putting it into a software that will adapt the script make a faceless videos add the music to how to create images to do thumbnails that are all ai generated as photo editor just voice generator having a piece of ai like you know the freaky ai faces that talk for you they duplicate you and they speak but you can tell it's not you so it's really i'm testing as soon as i'm targeted all the time if i go to social media most of the things that are targeted to me are ai so i see a new they target me with something new i'm like yeah i take a note and the day after i start looking <laughs> at it to see i'll log in i'll try I'll, I'll try it out to see how it compares to others but it's test 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 and that's one of the things why i do it so that i can tell if i have a if i have a client that that has a specific need i can tell i can tell them right away just to say this is what you should use this is what's going to do what and from there i'm always testing like i was prior to being a sales engineer i was in networking and i i was programming high-end routers for massive telecommunication companies so being i used to be a coder i used to code off of command line so i'm a nerd deep down i'm a nerd i love technology and i'm always going to be playing with it no matter what it's just i found a way to make it my job again so yeah i was get i was gonna i forgot about the your, your prior work experience in yeah. uh in in tech because it's quite psychologically draining having to learn the whole time but if it's something that you see as part of your job and you enjoy then obviously that that's awesome but i don't think everyone has that same kind of capacity oh. what would you suggest to to those folks who are seeing all of these changes seeing all of these new technologies come out what what how would you suggest they choose their software or a tool the first is by far by far use a command line right now the most powerful one is chat gpt by far but google's coming out with their own that's supposedly is going to change everything but it's nowhere close to being there now but i would start there just to start interacting with it just to, it's very strange to treat that i i treat it almost like it's a person so i i talk to i talk to it and i'm just like hey what do you think of this no no do you, what so it's really a two-way conversation that we're having it's very strange very very strange but just get used to utilizing it because right now it, again it depends if you're a content creator like you for example you create a lot of podcasts I would for sure say you you get a chat GPT in order to get ideas, to just brainstorm, to just kick the conversation back and forth to see what makes sense. Then you can use it to do to give you idea for a script for a video, for example. But where content where content creation can really be helped is by softwares like Opus that will chop down long form content into short, like repurpose it basically. It is the the best one out there. I've tested basically them all. It is the best one. 
but there's still a lot of work to be done. Like I can tell you right now that all the reels that are touched by my team, they don't use AI to do it. They actually still do it. They know, we know the type of style that our our clients or myself like, and we they will listen to the full episodes and chop them off. They know. I have another client that told me the same thing. She has millions of followers on all platforms and she tells me the same. She still listens to all of her podcasts and decides which one to edit because she knows her public that well. She knows her audience so well. She knows what works and what doesn't. So as much as those video editors are great, I use them, but not that much. I use them more in the caption. Like let's say I'm doing like I'm going to release a video after this that I'm editing off my phone. I love to use my phone to do editing, but like the captions are auto-generated. This is this is a style of AI, right? That will that makes it extremely simple, but I am still doing the editing manually because as much as AI is great, it's not that great. But you can shove a 2-hour episode in there, it will chop it off. So you can go back and say, oh, that's at three minutes. That's a video between three and four minutes. Awesome. I'm going to go there. So it kind of shortened the time that you're listening to all your episodes. You might not need to listen to the whole thing. But you know what? Again, it depends how much content you want to put out there too. Because you look at Alex Hormosi and you look at Gary V. They post something like 64 times a day to 250 times a week. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. But they have a lot of content. Like yeah. how many times have I taken podcasts like this one we're doing right now? I'll send it to my guys or I'll just dump it in Opus and it will chop it off for me. I'll go back. I'll edit it to make it look nicer, to make it look better. But it does a portion of the job as in going through the whole interview. It'll identify the good part and I'll play with it from there. Yeah, you can't take away the human element. And I had that the exact discussion you and I are having now in terms of the the AI suggesting cuts, they're generally pretty bad. And yep. I have to and I it's also better for me because I learn the content better. So that when I'm putting together those clips, I know, okay, this is a good section, this is a good section. Where the AI does come in and I use Riverside, for example, and that's yep. And those are really bad, <laughs> that, yep. but it's still it's still a starting process. So AI, I'm sure it will get better and better. But it's a, it's a great concept. But I can hardly ever use any of the the content that it that it suggests. But in terms of captions, in terms of summaries, and the great thing and describe right now is it can take the entire transcript and give you a summary. Whereas before you had to chop it up into little pieces, go to ChatGPT, then it would do different styles. So there, there definitely are ways that one should use AI and then other ways where you need to put your, your special touch, your special touch on, on AI. Let, let's say you do a cool reel. Content. You know you have a reel that you're going to put on Instagram and TikTok. Then you shove it into a translator. It takes all the text, takes it for you. It just takes all the text. Then I take that text, I shove it into ChatGPT and I'm like, make me a post for LinkedIn. It will take that, it will turn it into a post. I will edit the post the way I like it with my words. But then once it's done, I'm like, hey, take my last part, put it into a Facebook post because LinkedIn is a lot more professional than Facebook. LinkedIn, you don't get a bunch of emojis with, hey, so it's more professional. But this is what AI does is that you can literally take that video, say, write me a blog a thousand word blog, no problem. Then you reshape it, you rename it the way you want. So it's really think about it on structure. Then you build on that structure. So you still need the video editing skills. You still need the video presence. You need to be able to write, but it does like half the job for you, 60% of the job for you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to two last points that we have actually touched on before because I think they're important to to look at in the future of our industry basically content creation right. social media and advertising I'm going to challenge you on two things that you said one that people are you've got four seconds to get people's attention the second is that long-form content is dead so 
on the first and I, I want to talk I want to talk about the the first point I'm sure it's in the milliseconds not in four seconds maybe what you mean is four seconds for them to listen to it and get the point but to get somebody's attention you're talking about that hook how do you get people scrolling down their phone they're not reading every little sentence we we have got our brains have have recalibrated to be able to filter out hundreds of millions of messages a day now and how do you get somebody to stop of yours can you actually get somebody to stop at your ad i mean it's it's basically like a lottery machine at the moment this is why well there's a few things about what you said there's distribution and what you said where the, the the right video needs to be in front of the right person that's why understanding hashtags descriptions and titles are everything but let's say that my video is in front of the right person. It's also the words that you use in order to cap to capture that attention. So uh, the video I'm going to release earlier, I'm talking about a guy that saves a woman. I'm not just going to go into the subject and say, I, hey, this ex, guy X helped woman Z from a carjacker. I'm like, oh, man, I cannot believe I'm just hearing about this now. Then I'm going to go into the subject. So this is right there. You looked at me and you're like, yes, yes. Just because I introduce it in a way where I can, I can't believe I, how did I just hear about this now? It happened 12 days ago. Why am I hearing about this now? So people are like, hey, what, what are you talking about? So this is the point, right? I'm not even necessarily talking about the subject. I'm just making an impression on people that will let them say like, oh, I'm curious. What is he talking about? And, but the, what's important is that it can't be fake. Mm. So the reaction I just had is authentic. When I read it this morning, I'm like, this this was my reaction. I'm like, how the hell am I just hearing about this now? Like, this happened 12 days ago. Why are they talking about this now? Yeah. So this is why as you get better with this, it's more conscious. Like right now, I, record, I recorded a two-hour segment with a pastor the other day. And I can already see the cuts. I'm asking him questions. And in my head, I'm like, oh, there's three reels there. There's four reels there. That's a good reel. That's going to be a three-minute video. I already, he's talking, and I all, I'm formulating my questions because I know that in the back end, I'm going to be editing in reels. This is why, that's, this is why I say long-form content is dying because my long-form content is not even long-form anymore. It's long-form because I'm recording for an hour. But it is in my head, it is a bunch of reels put together. Because in order for people to get to my long form content, they have, I need to capture their attention within four seconds of a one minute maybe video. But if you look at TikTok right now, which is one of the most popular platform on the planet, Asper Research, 22 seconds is the perfect length of a reel. That's crazy. 22 seconds is what and you have four seconds of a hook like it's it's nuts absolutely nuts but yeah this is why i say that long form content is dead nobody now will listen to new form content or long form content sorry if they don't know the person it's like if you look at marketing marketing says that in order for somebody to buy your product they need to interact with your product somehow seven times so this is what i mean by long form content is dead like most I'm at, I'm at a point seriously to debate why would I create more long form content if I can simply create reels because I can get reels that will have two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 views, a million views. They took me a fraction of the time to make compared to I could do a long, a one, two hour podcast and only use five reels out of one hour. Why not instead? So th this this is the debate that you need to have in the field but this has to do with the type of content that you create yeah. i do a lot of political content so i'm capable of branching it into a minute but can i really go into a long-form conversation about my life in a one minute reel of course not but i will capture people's attention with a one minute reel and those people once they enter my my i like to call it my social media funnel they'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? I want to know more about this guy. But it is the one minute reels that caught people's attention. Yeah, I suppose depending on where they are on the customer journey, as you mentioned, you've got to have those couple of interactions. And okay, let me see a little bit more. 
I, 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 for example, I almost do it the opposite way around. I like looking at long form mm -hmm. and then I'll listen to some of these short little bits if I don't have time later on. So, but it depends on the type of content. So it's about knowing your customer and mm -hmm. you can't make everybody happy to be very honest. And I think you, 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 I'm sure you'd subscribe to that. So yep. 50% if you're lucky and the other half, you know, 50% will love you, 50% will hate you, the other 50% don't care. So <laughs> that's my mathematics class for today. Last thing before we go, what is something interesting about you that we might not have read on your LinkedIn page, your website page, what, other than driving around the States in an RV and being a Canadian, a French speaking Canadian at that? <laughs> French speaking Canadian that's outside of Canada traveling yeah. the US while running a business from the back of his RV. Yeah, that's, um, you know, one thing, this whole journey of mine started about 20 years ago when I discovered the gym. That's something that you won't know off my LinkedIn, that I went from being bullied, from being un unconfident, from being weak mentally, from changing all of that with the discovery of the gym and martial art. Martial art forged me as a man. I wouldn't have been in sales. I wouldn't be doing millions of views every month if it wasn't for the fact that I first learned how to fight and I stepped in a ring to fight in front of people. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely, uh, yeah, the, the fighting side, I, uh, I'm, I'm pro, I love watching boxing and martial arts, but I'll leave that to, leave that to, the, leave that to the professionals. Nico, it's been such a treat speaking to you. Last thing, where can I send people to learn a little bit more about you? If they want to learn more about what I do as business portion, you can go to plproduction.co. If you want to learn more about what I do as a person, the type, my why, you can go to nicolagan.com. Awesome. I'll stick those links up so people can check them out. Nico, thanks again and uh, safe travels. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Mm, come chat with Nicholas. He'll listen to you. Then he'll laugh and then he'll cry with you. It's all in a safe space for you to speak your truth.